I guess. Just lunch, lunch time at work. Um, a lot of people have been bringing up a lot of stuff on cravings and sugar and stuff lately and how they're about to crack and they're about to do all these things that um, are going to make them make the wrong decision with food. And then I got to thinking, what are some of the things that I did in my life to stop me from doing that, those things? Well, I would go find something to do. Go outside and jump in the garden, pick the weeds, plant flowers, do anything like that. I'd find something around the house to do, clean something, jump on a video game. I actually went and bought an Xbox 360, even though that's like an ancient now. And I used it for three months to kick a lot of my cravings. Anytime that I wanted to go eat something that I knew I shouldn't eat, or even eat more than what I should eat, I would just go jump on the Xbox real quick, and I'd play a few games on my Xbox, and all of a sudden I would forget about it. Guys, it's mind over matter. Mm -hmm. And when it, when it all boils down to it, it's as simple as it's just a craving. It's not going to hurt you by not having it. It's just a, an emotion or a sensation that you're trying to fulfill that it doesn't even need to be filled. It's just you have to change your mindset. You have to switch your mindset from what you were doing. And you have to think about um, doing, just doing other things or the negative side effects of what you're about to do. And, you know, um, one of the things that I'm struggling with my aunt right now is she's got COPD. She's got lupus. She's got like female issues. Um, she's got all kinds of medical problems and stuff. And she won't kick the smoking. And it's not getting easier. You, you know, I've tried the whole, you know, you, you, your mom and your dad both had problems. And, you know, and our, the rest of our family has problems with smoking. But yet we still continue to make the decisions that we make and continue to smoke. It's something psychological. It's uh, it's a way that you have to, something that you have to do to break that. And I noticed that whenever she works around the house or when she's out in the yard with me working, she didn't even really think about smoking too much. She just keeps going. But whenever she's sitting at home idle, that's when the cigarettes come out, the boredom. That's when the cravings and start to stuff start to come at night because you've worked this pattern of having dinner and making sure that you had to have a snack growing up so it's something that stuck with you forever we have to break those patterns we have to find something that simply breaks those patterns i did a live video one time where i tried something extreme to see if it works and i had about 50 people on and i told them pick your most desirable food that you want your go-to snack the thing that really gets you that's not good the thing that makes everything go away and is, is better. Post it on the screen below. I want to hear you post what you did below. And then I created a, uh, a visual effects to go, to go along with it. It was very disgusting. And it was inappropriate. But I learned this from another guy that was talking about psychology and stuff like that. And how you can reset and affect the mind. So... All these people were posting pizza and cookies and everything else. And it was just one of my moments where I had to be vulgar. It was part of the demonstration that I did. And I won't go over it right now, the things that I said. But by the time I was finished, people were like logging out. They were completely distracted and they, or they're like, they were disgusted by what I said and they got off. But then weeks later, people started messaging me and said, you know what, every time I eat that food now, I think about what you said and it completely destroys my appetite and I don't even want it no more because I think about the things that you said and even though I don't like what you said, I really appreciate you doing that for me because now me thinking about that stops me from putting that stuff in my mouth and it has helped me tremendously. You know, I don't wanna do that on YouTube because that was a private group that I did that in. It was a, a, an experiment that I went through and it worked extremely well. Um, but at the same time, uh, Sometimes I feel like maybe I should make that YouTube video again or make a YouTube video of that just so I can be that point in somebody's life. I know it, I would attract a lot of negative attention, but um, it helped a lot of people by me doing what I did. It's just breaking that psychological pattern or that breaking that pattern that you've always had even as a child and learning to live without having it. And in those moments where you want that sweet stuff, if it's simply lack of sodium or lack of magnesium or um, just lack of potassium um, if you're craving magnesium and you think that you know uh, you have to have something sweet or you have to nine times out of ten that's a chocolate fix chocolate fix 
people that want chocolate are simply craving some kind of salt or some kind of magnesium. You know, there are different triggers for everything, and there are charts out there which I urge you guys to find. But, guys, look about look at how many other things that you have to focus on in your life, your kids, the the you know, traversity and stuff like that that people have to go through, and we make some of the smallest urges and some of the smallest cravings control us or we let them not make and we let it rule our life and run our life when we simply know that if we just walked away and had some salt water or something like that or just some chicken broth or you know have that treat every once in a while but only have it every once in a while only have it to where you know that you're about to break and when you think you're about to break push even further until you get used to not having it and you'll you will adjust you're very very trainable the palate is very trainable and we can uh, break our cravings very easy by keeping ourselves busy and then finding other things to do in our life and even thinking about things that have happened to our family members and stuff as a result of the things that we want to do like for instance my aunt i tell her every time you want to smoke a cigarette think about your your dad passing away because of you know health conditions think about your mother passing away because of health conditions think about you not being here for your children and stuff like that, it's extreme, but it's the truth, you know? When it all comes down to it, because of the things that we choose to do, and our vices are what either make or break us. And these, these situations, I'm sorry, that's just how it is. You wanna smoke a cigarette, you run the risk of getting lung cancer. You run, you run the risk of um, lessening your, life's, your lifeline so you're not there for your family and stuff like that because of selfish choices that you make. They're your choices, but they're selfish choices when it comes down to it. That's why I quit smoking eight years ago. Now, do your thing, but just remember there are ways that we can break these patterns and stuff and we don't always have to resort to a, oh, what am I deficient in to fix this? A lot of times it's stuff that you do during the day. If you're just sitting there not doing anything, go crochet, go in the garden, go for a walk, go call a friend up and talk to him for a while, go for a long drive, go grocery shopping, do something. I mean, just go get yourself, make yourself busy. And a lot of times that's what fixes it for me. Like right now, I should be at lunch. I don't even want lunch today. I'm going to work right through it, and I'm not going to crave anything because it's just not, I, feel, I don't feel like I need it. All right, guys. Thanks.